In this video, I want to discuss kinematics in two dimensions. All right, we've taught kinematics, remember, was describing motion by relating the position, velocity, and acceleration in time variables. So we're going to extend that now to two dimensions. We've been doing everything in one direction, one dimension. And in order to do that, we're going to have to use vectors. We have to stretch our vector knowledge a little bit more than we've done so far. All right. So remember that a vector is a group of numbers, one or more. Okay. And you can have a representation, a ge geometrical representation, an arrow, and you have an arrow has a length and a direction, so that's how you can represent multiple numbers with a geometrical object. An arrow with a certain length pointing in a certain direction. Okay? That's where we, we were so far. And we actually, actually, I take that back. We learned a little bit more than that. We also learned how to calculate components. We uh, used that, so we had. Uh, and if we had to learn a little trig to do that, not too much. But uh, if this one has a length L and this is an angle theta, then this, the length of this piece, this vertical piece we said was L sine theta. The length of this one was L cosine theta. And likewise, if I have a, let's say I, instead of knowing the length and the angle, let's say I knew the components and I was going in the other direction where I wanted to find the, the length and the angle. Okay, so in this situation, let's say that this was L, the, X, the horizontal components, so we'll call that LX, and let's say this was LY. So the length here, this one is LX squared plus LY squared by Pythagorean theorem. And the angle is the arc tangent of LY over LX. All right, so that's what we had so far. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to have to define some other operations with vectors. We're going to have to define vector addition, vector subtraction, and scalar multiplication. All right? Now, and oh, by the way, when we, we talk, we usually put an arrow on top of a letter that denotes a variable. So notice I just put a arrow above the right there. Okay, so that's when we're, when we're talking about a vector instead of a length. Okay, so keep that in mind also. All right, so vector addition and subtraction. So there's a algebraic way and a geometric way to do it. First, the algebraic way. So suppose I had a vector 1, 2, and I wanted to add it to 3, 4. Okay? Now, vector addition was simply made up. Okay? It, the same way that you might make up a card game, people made up rules for vectors for addition, subtraction, scalar multiplication. And um, they obviously picked definitions that were useful. Okay, so I'm going to show you uh, the definitions they chose and then try to show you why they're useful. So what they chose was you simply add the, the first two pieces, the, fir the, the corresponding components. So the 1 and the 3 and the 2 and the 4. Okay, so the sum of those vectors is the vector with components 4 and 6. All right. Now, what about vector subtraction? In, in subtraction, instead of adding the components, you simply subtract the components. So 1 minus 3, 2 minus 4. So that gives minus 2 minus 2. In this case, they were both the same. Okay? And then finally, what I called scalar multiplication. The scalar is another name for a number. So what if I had something like 3 times 1, 2? What does it mean to multiply a scalar by a number? Well, you can simply, it's been defined as simply mul you distribute or multiply the scalar, the number, mul each of the components by that number. Okay, so then this gives 3, 6. So there you have it. There's examples of scalar multiplication 
excuse me, scalar addition, scalar subtraction, and scalar multiplication, or vector addition, vector subtraction, and scalar multiplication. Now, let me give you the general formula using variables, but this is going to be an uh, instructive example nevertheless. So if I had a comma b plus c comma d, that's equal to a plus c, b plus d, all right, you get the picture. Okay, and then if I had a constant k in front of a vector, I can just do this. There you have it. Those are the definitions we're going to be using. All right, that's all well and good. How would you use it using the arrow representation? All right. Um, let me show you that. So suppose that I wanted to do, uh, suppose that I had a vector a, like, and it was in this direction, and suppose I had a vector b in this direction. Okay, what does it mean to do a plus b? By the way, um, I, when I give you the, er, the interpretation of addition with arrows, it's going to give the same answer as the blue expressions. All right, it's just a different way to arrive at the same answer, but let's make that clear. It's not that there's two separate types of addition. Okay, so what you do to figure out the vector sum is you take the first vector, make a put it, make a copy of it. Okay, so this is vector vector A. And then you line up the second vector so that it starts at the tip of the first one. See that? So here I have vector A and I have vector B lined up head to tail, as they say. Okay, when you have them lined up that way, then the vector that goes from the uh, tail of the first one, the beginning of the first one, to the end of the second one. So this black vector then is A plus B. Okay, let me show you that that gives the same answer as the um, the the algebraic version. Okay, so if I had 0 comma 1 plus 1 comma 0 that would give 1 comma 1 alright now 0 let's let's make some x y axes and let's do this right alright so um, if I had 0 1 can you see what direction that vector would be 0, 1, so it starts at the origin and goes up to 0, 1, well, basically. Okay, so there's point 1, and let's, let's put another, let's put some coordinate numbers here. And let's give a name, let's call this vector C and vector D. So we're doing C plus D, okay? Now, vector, that's, so that's, I just drew vector C. Okay, vector D goes from the origin to 1, 0. So let's draw that one. Okay, so there's vector D. Now we said before that we need to line them up head to tail. Okay, so let me take a copy of D and put it where the point of C is. Okay, I'll make the copy a red vector. So there's another copy of D right there. Okay, so we can also call that vector D. All right, so now that we have them lined up that way, let's draw the one from the beginning of C to the end of D, or the point of D, whatever you want to call it. And so there is that vector. Okay, and what is the point where they all come together there? The, that is the point 1, 1. All right, so lo and behold, it worked out. Okay, so everybody's happy, I hope. Now, how do you do vector subtraction with arrows? Okay, well, here's what I would suggest. So C minus D, you might remember from arithmetic class that subtraction is the same as adding the the inverse or the negation okay so 
for the sake of understanding what how to do this this is think of that this is equal to C plus minus D okay so in other words we can we can figure out what vector subtraction is by simply figuring out what the negation of D is once we figure out what minus D looks like we can simply add it to C like like the example we just did okay negating a vector that's basically multiplying all the components by a minus one what that will end up doing and you might want to draw it out you'll see what well here I'll, I'll do it I'll do it for you so let's take here's D one comma zero and let's multiply do let's do the scalar multiplication by minus one so that'll give minus one comma zero okay whenever you negate a vector like that it's gonna basically make the vector point in a different direct in the opposite direction not any direction not any different direction so let's see I'm running out of colors let's go with light blue so let me draw a vector like this to the minus one and that light blue vector then that one is that's not D that one is rather that's the minus D vector okay and so C plus a copy of that let's see what that's going to do and I realize the picture is getting a little messy let's put a copy up at C so here's a copy of negative D at the point that starts at the point of C so this is another minus D and so now C minus D or C plus the negation of D that vector finally is going to be this yellow vector from the origin to right there okay and that's that goes to the point minus one comma one and if we work out the subtraction we'll see that again that gives the same thing so zero minus one one minus zero gives minus one comma one so everybody's happy all right so we've done vector subtraction vector vector addition vector subtraction all right what about scalar multiplication let's do that one and we'll have to go to a new whiteboard for that one so like for example three times a okay let's say that a was zero comma one okay so we know already that that's going to give zero comma three what that does is it makes it's it's the same as simply making the vector longer or shorter So we start out at 0 comma 1 and so here is vector A okay and so multiplying by 3 is basically tripling the size so you take uh, you can think of it this way 3a is a plus a plus a and we know how to do vector addition already right so now take three a's line them up head to tail and so what happens you end up at the, th the th 0 comma 3 which is exactly the answer we got from the algebra way okay if you multiplied by let's say one half of a that's one half of zero comma one that's zero comma a half that's going to give a vector half as long all right let's, let's see, this direction doesn't change just the length of the vector